Got a pretty good crowd and I'll start off this a little slow. Looks like we still got a few people jumping on. But the meat of this will be about five or 10 minutes later. So I think this will work out. And uh, Laura, have you already started the recording? Yes, we did. All right, perfect. All right, good evening. Uh, sorry, good evening, everyone. Uh, so this is the public meeting for construction of Keller Hicks Road. This is specifically for Keller Hicks going from Lauren Way to 377. So uh, I'll go through and show you all what we're building, show you how our phasing for the construction, talk about how long we're looking for construction, and some of the uh, some of the things you keep an eye out for during construction and go through there. Then we'll open it up at the end for questions. And then I'll have my uh, contact info at the end. And yeah, feel free to contact me via email or phone afterwards. Uh, it's no issue there. Um, I know I'm the type that will usually just rather email someone afterwards and talk to them then. Uh, if you are a property owner along the road and I haven't talked to you specifically about this construction, um, feel free to contact me via email and I'll work with you on specific details. And uh, I know there's a few people I've seen jump on that uh, we've been working with in the past and um, I'll just work with you one-on-one -on, -one on those issues. But specifically, this is Keller Hicks from Lauren Way to 377. And uh, my name is Mitch Ayton, I work at the City of Fort Worth, and I'll be the city project manager on this project. So our project team, it'll be myself. Uh, we have uh, Jason Bradley on board as our inspector, and we've got a whole inspection team uh, supporting him as well. This is a joint project with the city of Keller, and I'll show you later just uh, where kind of our project splits between city of Keller and city of Fort Worth, but it'll all be done by one contractor and uh, we're just splitting up the funds on how we pay for it. Uh, city of Keller contact will be Chad Barty. Um, but feel free to just contact me if you have any specific questions and I'll, uh, I'll work with Chad and pour forward them over to him if uh, it's a specific issue on uh, city of Keller, uh, part of the project or a property. Multitech's our design engineer on the project, and McMillan Contracting is our contractor. Uh, we got a really great contractor on this. We've worked with McMahon in the past, and they produce a really good product, and they do a very, really good job of uh, working with us to keep things safe and uh, basically as easy as it can be on the public. This will be a pretty difficult project to build for the public to keep driving on, so I'll show you kind of some hurdles that we're working through on that. And then uh, we'll keep you updated as we go along with the construction and I'll give you a heads up of what this is gonna look like going in. Uh, this is funded versus a few different sources. It's kind of a different project, but it's uh, one of our original 2018 bond projects. It's kind of grown into working with City of Keller. Uh, and I'll show you kind of where City Keller gets involved, but they contributed to this project. And then we have a few other sources kind of filling in the gaps to help make sure uh, everything gets constructed and we don't have to take any important aspects out. So the improvements you should see come in, it's a two lane asphalt road there today. So anyone who hasn't driven the road. And then it's going to a three lane concrete road. So basically one, lane each direction with the center turn lane. Uh, all the drainage that you see out there getting today, today that's in the ditch, it'll be collected in the in the curb gutter and uh, taken to a culvert that we'll be upgrading out there. The 10 foot shared use path sidewalks, so that's gonna be a great improvement. I've seen some people out there walking along the ditch or the side of the road, so I know that's it's gonna be well used and I'm sure everyone's gonna really appreciate that once it's built. Uh, we're gonna improve the drainage collection out there as discussed. I know we had a pretty big rain of it out there or throughout the city about a month ago. I hadn't heard any issues out there on 
certain flooding, but uh, there are a couple areas. There is one area where we have a culvert that'll uh, take it out of the flood zone. So, in a big rain event, this road will not have any water overtopping it in the future. So, be a great improvement. And then we're also doing some illumination improvements out there, as well as adding a traffic signal at Katy Road and Killer Hicks. Also, as part of this project is uh, we are improving the railroad crossing that goes over the tracks between Katy Road and 377. And I'll talk about that in more detail as we move forward. So as part of the improvements we were talking about, go to a three-lane road. This is basically what we should expect to see. Just a normal three-lane road, 12-foot lane, center turn lane. And then we'll tie back into existing pavement at Lauren Way. Uh, we do have a future project coming that is uh, in the stages of getting final design. And we'll start moving some franchise utilities on that project that goes between Lauren Way and Park Vista. But this construction project is strictly between Lauren Way and 377. So uh, basically, we're you've seen the past year or so we've been moving all those uh, overhead electric poles you'll start seeing that on the rest of Keller Hicks going forward and start seeing our contract to get out there and start building a road so be pretty exciting so as we get to Katy Road we'll have a couple turn lanes um, obviously you, if you've driven the road you see how close the trail the railroad tracks are to Katy Road, so that'll be pretty short turn lane. Be putting the new sidewalk out there, putting the traffic signal at Katy Road. It's going to be worked in with the railroad crossing. So if you're used to seeing how signal works when when the train's going, it's going to look pretty similar to that. A uh, new feature out there. It's going to be pretty nice. Is the sidewalk goes across the tracks. So we have some features there of uh, how the sidewalk crosses and that'll be a nice little improvement as well. Uh, the city of Keller limit, so our city limit line is kind of unique around this area. It goes like right through the middle of the intersection. So city of Keller is paying for all our improvements going across the railroad tracks. And then we're splitting that traffic signal cost 50-50. Uh, and then uh, City of Fort Worth's paying for everything going to the west. But we're all building it with one contractor, and so you don't have to wait for a separate contractor to come out there and build the rest of it. This is kind of what it looks like going up and down Katy Road, so some more turn lane improvements. But for the most part, we're just tying into Katy Road as soon as we. Uh, in those left turn lanes. And then basically, uh, as we go across the tracks, we'll be tying into the existing pavement, and uh, that existing intersection at 377 will remain the same. So, if you've seen uh, improvements to other traffic signal crossings, what you'll expect to see on this is we'll be working with those. With those arms that cross the road and block traffic we'll also be changing the grade on this so a lot of times when we work on those railroad crossings they were done a long time ago and this just like a giant speed hump as you go over the railroad tracks and when we go back and redo them we're basically changing the grade of the road so it actually comes out pretty level with the railroad so part of what you'll expect to see is that railroad crossing on both sides of the road or the actual the, sorry the road on both sides of the railroad crossing you'll see that come up and then you'll also see the grade change at Katy Road a little bit as we have to carry that profile change and raise the level of uh, Katy Road a little bit so it, as you go across the tracks in the future when construction's all done it should be a nice smooth crossing so I'll be Pretty nice in the end as well. Uh, some, some unique parts of this that you should be aware of as we go through our phasing 
is there are aspects of when we work on the railroad that have to be done by a, their specific railroad contractor. So our contractor will be able to work on everything within like five, up to like five feet of the railroad tracks. And then we have to coordinate some, some items with the, with their contractors. So there are some phasing of this. They'll be completely dependent on when their contractor is available and they have not given us a specific timeline yet. So I have some items I'll talk about of how we phase this, but just know that as, as we work on the railroad crossing, that'll become something that we'll get the word out and make everyone aware of it, but uh, it's something I can't give a specific date to is at the moment. And that's just kind of something we have to work with when we work with these railroad crossings. So the phasing on this, uh, when we were in the, in the middle of, uh, so when we were working on the project for a while on this, the plan was just close it down. Because as, you, as you've seen out there, it's a very narrow right away. It's pretty difficult to keep two lanes of traffic open while they're trying to build any of these lanes. But uh, there's a few businesses along here that and some uh, some other aspects that we need to keep open. So it's it's going to be closed at times to build the road, and then when it's open, it's going to be difficult to go through. So my advice to everyone that doesn't need to drive on Keller Hicks would be just avoid it during construction when you're able to. And then uh, it's, so it's gonna be pretty difficult to go through when we start construction. So our first big thing that's gonna impact everyone is there's a culvert, a pretty sizable culvert right in the middle of the project um, so that the street name at the moment, it's, it's, it's Buckhead Intersection. Uh, if you've driven through there, it's basically that new intersection that was built for the homes on the north side of the road. There's a pretty massive culvert that we're installing along there, and we're going to need to close down Killer Hicks when we build that. And that'll be one of the first items we work on. So what we will plan on be doing is we're going to close it at that intersection, and there's just a few businesses, and we're coordinating with them um, between the, the Buckhead intersection and Katy Road. So expect that to be closed in late January and expect that to take about three months. Uh, we've got a really great contractor. So if he's got ways to speed things up, he's going to be looking into doing that. But expect that to just not be able to travel on uh, as we start construction in the spring. And we'll get some advanced notice out there. So you should see a message board or some sort of sign letting y'all know when any of these closures start. And then uh, any of y'all that have certain businesses along the road, just uh, shoot me an email and uh, I will make sure you guys are all um, kept up to date and I can work with you on producing anything that will help with you and your customers and clients. So expect us to do that. And then there's some points where we're gonna be able to keep traffic on Keller Hicks open. And that's going to be basically after he gets our uh, our culvert built and gets a lot of this pavement built and open to traffic. We're going to basically build the rest of Killer Hicks half and half. And uh, but the same thing with this is it's pretty limited right away, so it's just going to be one lane of traffic open. So it's going to be one lane, one way traffic. And the way we're going to phase it is it's going to be one way going westbound, so away from the railroad crossing. So it'll be one way away from the railroad crossing. And the, the plan on that is we don't want to send people towards the railroad crossing and have it be one way traffic and then have the railroad be cro closing down the road and people have nowhere to go. So um, that's basically what we're looking at on that. And then after we get a lot of the Killer Hicks Road built, we'll be kind of at the mercy of when the railroad lets us know of when their contractor's available. At the moment, it kind of looks like it might be the summer, but uh, 
he's been contacting us lately and giving us different dates. So uh, we're kind of on a wait and see moment with them and see how this works. But when we get to the railroad, it's the same issue there. It's a pretty narrow crossing. So we're just going to have to close down the Keller Hicks crossing. And that'll be another crossing that takes about three months to build. Uh, we might get tricky and do it a little faster. But expect at least three months. And basically what we'll be doing for uh, any proposed detours is we'll be advising everyone to use the Golden Triangle and uh, Timberland crossings. As well as uh, when we do any closures on Keller Hicks, we'll be detouring traffic on Golden Triangle and Timberland. Uh, Golden Triangle is the closer one, but I know that one already has some pretty heavy traffic in most of the people who live in the neighborhood won't want to take Golden Triangle, but uh, Timberland's one of our newly opened railroad crossings and got four lanes of traffic open up there. Uh, so that would be my advice is anyone that lives in the neighborhood just uh, plan on using Timberland a lot between uh, January and the summer. And uh, we'll we'll eventually get Keller Hicks back to working normal again and it'll it'll be a lot easier to travel up and down after we get it built. Uh, any any issues on Katy Road? Uh, basically, phasing it where we'll be able to keep one lane of traffic open, but it'll be one way southbound. And same thing on that. If you can avoid Katy Road at all possible, uh, it'll, at all uh, that would be advisable. And just plan on using uh, Park Vista or uh, 377 to go north and south for a while. Until, uh, until we can get to that point. But uh, yeah, these will, these will be a little difficult um, for anyone who needs to drive through this construction zone before it's all completely built. So that would be my advice is just plan on using other roads for a while, um, but we'll have, when, we, when we're able to keep traffic open, there'll, there'll be a path, but uh, it'll be very slow and It'll probably take just as much time as if you just take other roads for a while. And that's basically what we're looking at. So a lot of that pavement, uh, anything outside of working on that railroad construction, I would expect a lot of pavement to be built by sometime in the summer. And then uh, we'll, we'll see when the railroad's ready to work on that crossing that'll dictate a lot of the the pavement being able to build, be built around there. And then, so that'll be the main thing. I know everyone will be interested in and when can we drive on the new pavement again? And then we'll have a lot of other items like illumination and traffic signals to install, but uh, that'll be all after the pavement's built and open the traffic again. And we'll just be, uh, We'll be uh, phasing and, you know, flagging y'all as needed as we build those items, but uh, it won't be as as much of a hassle as when we're trying to build the pavement because, yeah, we just can't, uh, can't keep two-way traffic on these roads while we're tearing them up and rebuilding them. And, uh, yeah, that covers most of it. Um, I know there's a lot of detailed stuff everyone will be interested in on when exactly some of these um, closures will happen, but expect mid to late January to start seeing some signs being put up of uh, of the closure about to happen on Keller Hicks, and then expect about three months till we're able to open up any traffic again, and then uh, we'll keep everyone updated on when that railroad crossing is going to be closed. But yeah, that's uh, that's. Pretty much the whole thing. Um, but if you have any questions, start putting them in the chat box. And then if you have anything specific, especially if you're if you live along the road or you have a business um, along the road, uh, just shoot me an e email. Which here's my contact info at the end. And uh, anyone, feel free to contact me. But uh, yeah, specific. If you have any real specific questions on how this impacts your property or your business, just let me know via email, and I'll start. Uh, contacting everyone individually and 
we'll make sure uh, everyone's kept up to date. Uh, let's see. So let's see, first question. So are, are the homes being built, um, providing funds for the project? Uh, yeah, in a way, it's kind of a um, real detailed way of how the residential construction gets added to it. But uh, yeah, it's part of the, let's see. See the let's see the impact fees that come in to help build the roads that comes from local development. So yeah, that's where uh, that's where they're um, adding in to help build for the road. Uh, so when will the improvements be made on 377 side of the tracks? Uh, so yeah, basically that will happen as we work on the railroad crossing. So it's all going to be part of the same project. Uh, we just, as soon as the railroad tells me, hey, our contractor's ready to work on such and such date, um, we'll get that information out to everyone. But uh, at the moment, it kind of looks like it's summer until he tells us otherwise. Uh, see, will color portion grade be redone? Uh, yeah, so any pavement on that killer half where we're working on to the railroad, uh, it's basically what we're looking at is these limits here. So yeah, we're, we'll be working on the pavement adjacent to some of those businesses, but uh, if you represent one of those businesses, uh, feel free to contact me and uh, me and Chad with the city Keller will, we'll get back to you and talk to you about any specific details that you might be concerned with. I think he's been talking to a lot of those businesses uh, already. So uh, if you haven't heard from us, just let us know and we'll, we'll get back to you. So any plans on, let's see, uh, any plans on fixing Katy Road between Keller Hicks and Golden Triangle? So uh, Katy Road isn't part of our master thoroughfare plan. It's not necessarily part of this project. Uh, we have the turn lanes that we're building as part of this, but uh, if there's any specific issues out there, such as potholes or anything, uh, we have a new method of um, getting those issues out to us. And uh, let's see, so Laura, Terry, you'll, you probably know this better than I do, but it's the, what's the easiest way to Google and find that website? You got my AFW app, Mitch? Yeah, the Fort Worth app, but I know there's a website that's easy to use as well. But we have an app that's called the Fort Worth app that you can download to your phone. So you can just take a picture or upload a street light out or a pothole or something. And it'll, it's all set up um, where it'll go to the right person within the city to know how to fix that. And then they'll, if you put in your contact info, they'll get back to you on Oh, cool. We got a contractor ready to go work on it in a couple of weeks. We'll get it fixed by this time and they'll follow up with you to uh, make sure everything was addressed. Uh, but yeah, if there's any specific issues on Katy Road, uh, feel free to um, put them into that, that system on the. Uh, if you can't figure it out, just shoot me an email and uh, um, I'll help you on that one. But it, it is a pretty great website that was put together. That'll help to report issues. Sorry, Mitch. To report issues, they can either download my FW app from you know whether it's um, Play Store or um, you know the, the uh, what is it iTunes Store, and or they can call eight one seven three nine two one two three four. That's the city's number that pushes through a um, through a menu to report issues. So either one of those two forms. And there's a Fort Worth, you can, there's the website too. Um, I always, that might be it. Just Fort Worth report issues. And I think it's the first hit. And I always refer everyone to this because it's way easy. So, because um, all you gotta do is put in the name of what your, what the issue is and it'll narrow it down to the, the right thing. And then once you get it to the right thing, it's all set up to go to the right person. So, yeah. So if there's a pothole issue or their the striping was just gone or there's something else going on, um, 
y'all can always report in here and uh, see uh, mowing issues. I always report it, uh, refer everyone to here. So um, if it doesn't look like it's been mowed in a, in a couple months or whatever, um, you can always put it in here anywhere throughout the city and it'll, uh, it'll get to the right person. Uh, it's a pretty nice little setup that whoever came up with it. Uh, let's see. Let's see, will, will the new road be better quality? It seems that the cement does much better. The asphalt keeps crumbling. So yes, uh, this project will be a concrete road. So any new pavement that we're putting down will be concrete. There's a short little portion next to the railroad crossing that uh, the railroad tells us put asphalt there, which is like five feet. So it's not, it's all not, it's not a long section, but uh, everything that we put down for new pavement will be concrete. So that's, uh, that's a good one because yeah, once we build it and open it up to traffic, it's, uh, we don't have to mess with it for quite a while. <laughs> You don't have to deal with potholes or anything after rain events. Uh, let's see. So do you expect this project to be fully completed before the future project from Lauren Wade of Park Vista begins? Uh, that's a good question. Yes. Um, so this will be definitely pavement wise. It's going to be all built and open to traffic. And uh, I don't expect the other project to start construction before this one ends. And uh, if we are having issues with this, I don't see any issues with delaying this getting open to traffic, but if there are any issues with delaying this project, um, we won't start the other one until this one's complete. So uh, we won't have two competing projects uh, messing with uh, messing with y'all out there. We'll, uh, we'll make sure we phase them correctly. So, yeah, will the curbs and turns be redone on the Keller side, specifically the northeast corner? near the sign shop where trucks have had to hop the curb to turn on to killer Hicks from 377. Uh, let's see, I might have to come back to you on that one in specific detail. Uh, Chad, Paul, I see you're on board. Um, I don't know if you know about that specific issue, but we can, uh, we can take a look and just make sure we're, uh, addressing that one before we start building it. Hey Mitch, this is Chad, can you hear me? Yes. So there's no pavement improvements at 377 with this project. However, we'll, uh, I'll get with our maintenance guys and, and take a closer look at that specific issue. Okay. Okay, yeah, now I see the question. So this is the specifically at the intersection. It's not with one of the, one of the driveways. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see, do I understand the Keller Hicks Road will be completed around April? So most of Keller Hicks will be paved um, and open to traffic by sometime in the summer. So that's what I would expect. We'll have our culvert crossing and a lot of that pavement between that intersection where the homes are on the, south, on the north end to Katy Road, a lot of that will be done by April or May, and then we'll phase the rest of that. Go back to that. So a lot of this pavement will be done and open to traffic sometime April, May, um, around that timeline. And then the rest of it going towards Lauren Way, we'll have to build it half and half. So. That'll take a little longer. Um, I would expect sometime into summer, you'll see almost all of Keller Hicks built and open to traffic. Uh, so it'll it'll take a little time, especially when we're doing concrete, just because it takes a little longer to open it back up to traffic. Uh, when we do asphalt it, it's usually open the next day. But uh, like one of the questions earlier, asphalt might be quicker to open to traffic, but uh, it just, it takes a lot longer to a lot more maintenance in the end. So, um, so that's the only bit downside of the concrete is they'll take a little bit more time to open the traffic, but, uh, in the end, it'll be a better product for y'all to drive on. But yeah, back to that original question between for all the killer hicks between Katie road and Lauren way, I would expect some time 
mid late summer. Uh, a lot of that's built and open to traffic again. And we'll uh, we'll keep you updated on progress along the way. So there's a website. Uh, you just you just Google uh, Killer Hicks. Um, see if Fort Worth. It's usually one of the first hits. And uh, we'll keep you updated on here. So I'll be updating it at least once a month. And then uh, this would be the best place to just go through and kind of see what, what we're looking at. And then uh, if we're looking at closing the road at all, you'll, you should see a message board or a sign out there advising all of uh, We have a uh, upcoming closure on a certain date. And uh, so it shouldn't be any instances where you're driving on a Monday and then Tuesday you should, and then the road's just suddenly closed without any warning. Um, we'll have something out there giving a heads up of what's coming up. Uh, let's see. You're down to the last uh, image. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was going down the list. I see Rusty's put that link in there for the um, addressing issues. And then I'll uh, see, will Katie Road be expanded to three lanes at Keller Hicks as well? So let me pull that guy up. So this will be what Katie Road looks like in the end. So it's just at the intersection, you'll see some turn lanes added, but uh, a couple hundred feet after either direction, you'll see it go back down to two lanes. So that'll help things out, especially when the signal goes in, it'll, uh, help move traffic a little bit. I think everyone will enjoy that. Um, and then let's see, will the intersection at Katy Road be closed for three months that Keller Hicks is closed? So what you'll expect to see is when Keller Hicks is closed between, uh, between Buckhead and Katy Road, we'll keep at least one lane of traffic open. It'll just be one lane going southbound. So it's still going to be pretty difficult to get in and out of there. Um, so I would, I would expect just to avoid the area when as much as possible. Just get kind of used to taking Timberland or Golden Triangle, whatever's whatever's easiest to get across the tracks. But uh, we will have one lane southbound only open on Katy Road while we're while we're either working on Killer Hicks or we're working on. Uh, on the railroad crossing. Um, but yeah, that's just another one where it's just too narrow to keep two lanes of traffic open while we're trying to build that intersection up. Because part of the part of the issue is just a horizontal issue of where do you fit two lanes of traffic while you're building other pavement. And then the other issue is a vertical problem of to make that road crossing at Keller Hicks not be a speed hump like it is today, we have to build up the Katy Road intersection, so that becomes an issue of uh, keeping traffic on there while we're uh, building up the grade. Um, so that's another issue why it's just going to be one lane of traffic open during that timeline. But like I said before, we got a really great contractor on this, so if there's a way to, he's already thrown out a million ideas to me. So if there's a way to speed things up and make it easier on y'all, we'll uh, it'll definitely be done. Uh, see, will there be flood mitigation at Killer Hicks and Katy Road? Let's see, near the number seven on that. Uh, yeah, so we've been working to fix any drainage issues out there. Uh, the, this... So anything like that rain event that we had about a month ago, um, you shouldn't see any issues with the road after that. Uh, we, we designed for a hundred year storm event and I know that one a couple weeks ago or about a month ago, that was a pretty significant storm. So, um, but it wasn't a hundred year. So we'll, uh, yeah, you'll see any, any drainage issues you've been seeing out there today. A lot of that will be gone post construction. What, what is the, uh, end, uh, date of the project, the final update? So a lot of it's contingent on the railroad crossing on when we can do that because they originally told us it might 
be a year until they're out there, which would have meant next fall. Um, but they've been kind of given hints they might be done. They might be able to work on that crossing quicker than that. Um, but overall, I would expect this project to take at least a year, but it'll probably bleed into the spring of uh, 2025. But most of that will be a lot of uh, working on any illumination or traffic signal or sidewalks or something like that. I would expect a lot of that pavement to be built pretty quickly by summer 2024. And then that railroad crossing will, uh, we're just kind of at the mercy of the railroad of when they say you can work on it during this timeline. Um, and that'll kind of dictate when a lot of that pavement over there can be, can be done. So I would, I would expect this time next year, a lot of this to be complete. Um, and if we're lucky with the railroad, maybe a little quicker, especially with all the pavement, there might just be some items outside the curbs that we're, that we're working on. Um, so yeah, that's what we're looking at. Uh, let's see, just to confirm, Keller Hicks will be closed. So we have to go, uh, correct. So I would, have, I would, if you're used to driving Keller Hicks, especially to cross the railroad to get to 377, I would just plan on not using that as much as possible for the next six months or so between January and the summer. Um, I know it's a huge inconvenience, but uh, it's, I would just plan on acting like this, the road is closed. Well, we'll technically have it open at certain times um, just to make sure these businesses have, are able to get in and out of their properties. But, for the most part, this is going to be a very difficult area to get through um, once the contractor starts working out there. So um, I would just plan on using Park Vista, 377, Timberland, and Golden Triangle as much as possible. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see, is the width of the EP right away limiting when the right lane turns? Um, not as much as just. Uh, Having a turn lane going across the tracks isn't something they like doing as well, but uh, for the most part, that turn lane is kind of is what it is. But there's a lot of that's coming into how we work with the railroad on that crossing. Uh, so can anyone tell the railroad to stop running during the day? Um, short answer, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> So we've, uh, yeah, they have their right away to use the railroad as needed. Um, so uh, when we work on the tracks, we'll be working, coordinating with them on how that gets done around them. But uh, as for just shutting them down for a few months and letting us work on everything that, yeah, we're, we're not uh, allowed to do that. Uh, let's see, during the closure and uh, and southbound only lane at Katy, will Katy be marked closed going northbound? Uh, yeah, so uh, we're working on the details of how that'll be signed at the moment, but for the most part, you'll be able to get in and out of the, uh, the gym right there, but north of that gym, um, it's gonna be closed to through traffic. So uh, you'll see some signage being put up around there and that's basically what we'll be advising everyone is um, you can get in and out of Katie to get to that gym, but after that, it'll be closed. And again, this is my contact info. Uh, it's on that website as well. Um, so if, if you don't get it here, um, you can always just, you know, Google Color Hicks City of Fort Worth and uh, my contact info comes up there. Uh, we'll keep this updated as we move along. And uh, feel free to contact me anytime. Um, and yeah, if you all have one of those businesses out there or property you're concerned about that it's adjacent to the project, uh, just shoot me a message and we'll, uh, 
we'll get with you one-on-one -on -one and uh, work out any details we need to or uh, any issues during construction. And that's that's it from my end. Um, so I'll stick around in case any more questions be, get thrown into the chat. But uh, it looks like um, I think we're able to answer everyone's 